I know exactly where you are. Oh my one, God. one enemy Very remaining. Nice. Raze, you gotta help this man. Last player standing. Bruh. I mean, I hit him 80, you just couldn't hit him? You should have I mean, you should have played crossfire with me so that when he peeked, we would have killed him. We would have got the trade. Raze, you're literally the f worst Clutch. player I've ever seen. Yeah, bro, thank you very much. Man, what a tough match. And you know what? It didn't have to be that way. That match was actually really winnable. And we probably would have won by a larger margin had we not decided to go at each other's throats. My name is Ja, and I like to compete in video games. I started competing more seriously about four years ago in 2016 when I got a copy of Overwatch. Overwatch was the first shooter that I played that had a ladder system where you could actually climb in the ELO ranks and prove your worth. And I dedicated a lot of my life to that game. Uh, I lost a lot of sleep. I probably lost some friendships and I definitely lost track of my mental health. And that's why I'm here today. Mindful Games is my honest attempt at talking about mental health and how having a better understanding of your emotional state can help you improve in competition. I need to make this very clear. I am not a mental health professional. I wish I was. I wish I had the money to go back to school. I wish I had the time to commit to that. But I'm here right now and I'm gonna use my platform to start a good conversation. In this first episode, we're talking about patience and I mostly use examples from my own gameplay. But in future episodes, I'll be talking with professional players, coaches, and psychological professionals, and we're gonna get down to the bottom of this. We're gonna figure out why the online environment can be so toxic, and we're gonna figure out how to handle that. So, without further ado, this is Mindful Games. There's someone out there who needs your patience more than anyone else, and that someone is you. You need to have patience with yourself in order to improve in anything. There's always room for improvement, and if you aren't willing to wait on results, you're not gonna have a good time. Joke's over! You're dead! Phoenix mid? Dude, I should have had that. Patience with yourself is always going to be the starting point, no matter where your journey begins. And with any new game, everyone's journey starts at the same spot. A new game means a fresh experience, and it wouldn't be a fresh experience if every new player understood how to play the game immediately. There is so much to learn. Movement, gunplay, characters, and maps, to name a few. When you hop into a new game, what's the first thing you want to learn? For me, it's finding a character that best suits my playstyle. Yes, a game like Valorant shares similarities with games like Counter-Strike and Overwatch, but it is still a new game, which means even the pros are starting from scratch in some areas. Around the launch of Valorant, Riot hosted an exposition match between the game's developers and some of the top FDS streamers. Expectations were pretty low for the devs, seeing as the team of streamers was stacked with people who did or still play Counter-Strike professionally. But the developers showed up in full force, and we got some interesting reactions from our beloved streamers. As well, so if you get it open, oh God! Dude, they don't even know! They don't know! Oh, we got a triple! We're not gonna beat them like doing normal night now. I don't know, you just killed me through the smoke, I don't even know. Only some of these same streamers still play Valorant now. Everyone has their reasons, but when you look back at the Expo match, it's easy to see that one of the reasons was frustration with the game and no desire to learn it. If you're still with me, chances are you have a desire to improve in your competitive game of choice. Here's what to do next time you die in any video game or make a mistake or lose a match. Shake it off, you're not going to win them all. You know who else doesn't win them all? Michael Jordan, Shroud, The Sentinels. It's 
it's okay to lose. What matters is what you take from that lost 1v1 or that 13 to two defeat in Valorant. Ask yourself this question, what could you have done differently? And if you don't know the answer, try to find one. Don't blame the other player or say bad timing or bad luck. There's always something you can do to make sure it doesn't happen again. If you lose a 1v1, at the very least, you missed a shot. And again, everyone misses. I don't know about you, but I'm tired of blaming my teammates for the reason I'm losing. I know for a fact I don't play perfect, and my performance is just as important as theirs. So it's time to take responsibility for my own gameplay and stop focusing on others. Join me and do the same. I think we'll both see an improvement. When playing a competitive game like Valorant, you also need to have patience for your teammates. For the next 30 minutes, they are there to help you win the game and you are there to do the same for them. And the reason I'm talking about this is because it's almost never easy to play with total strangers. You know this, we all do. Just because you're playing in a ranked playlist doesn't mean you'll always have teammates who play well, we all have bad games, or teammates who will work with you the way you would want. You'll also play games with people you don't get along with or who aren't patient with you. So where do we go from here? Can we stop taking aim tools if you guys are not that confident in aim? Just play on site. It's like we don't push. Why, why, why am I being attacked? I killed somebody. No one's attacking you, bro. I, I didn't Just play on site. I didn't play anybody. I said, can we stop taking aim tools? Now I can attack you if you want me to. You want that? No. Alright, let's really calm didn't. down. Let's uh, calm uh, down. I'm if I was attacking, I would have said, f sorry for your Three and seven. I would have said that instead. Oh, I did it. Not trying to hear that. We all feel different things when playing games, competitive or not. Some of us are there to just unwind. Some of us have something to prove to either ourselves or other people. More on this later. And some of us like competing. After all, it's in our nature as humans, and competition is a part of nearly everything, from economics to even finding love. The other thing to consider is that we're all entering each match with our own emotional baggage. A total stranger isn't familiar with your joy, your pain, your match history, your last game where your teammates all ganged up on you because of one mistake, and you aren't familiar with anything your teammates are dealing with up to the start of the match. Why not start off with a simple warm greeting? You'd be surprised how much you can learn about someone with how they respond. Hi everyone. Who are you talking to? All of you guys. Oh, you're cool too. How's it going? What up? Hey team. All right, dude. Hey. D it would seem that we are playing rated in Valorant. Wow. Some great information there. If you can set a positive tone at the beginning of a match, you're far more likely to bring people together straight out of the gate. And it's far easier to play well in a positive and relaxed environment. I haven't gotten a kill in eight rounds. That's okay, dude. Don't worry about it. This is a new round. Let's get it. Yeah, that's what happened last round. Guess what? I still died. I didn't get a kill. It's all good. I hear him be. Reyna, you are be, so good at being positive. Here. That's something I'm working on. Keep holding that. You're doing great, Omen. <laughs> We're gamers. I'm telling you, these guys don't stand a chance. Let's go. GG, guys. Well played. Attackers win. Since we live in an imperfect world, what should our response be when people are toxic and refuse to stop? I'll send this one over to one of my favorite channels on Twitch. Keep in mind, Dr. K is talking about how to deal with people who are specifically toxic toward females in online games. But this tactic can be practiced in any situation, even in real life. You don't have to fight them. You don't have to convince them. You don't have to do any of that. You don't have to show them you're right. That's all you say, like, hey man, can you lay off? And then if he keeps going, you can apologize to the woman. You can say, hey, I'm sorry you have to deal with this. Sounds like it sucks. I can only imagine. If there's something I can do, let me know. That's all you gotta say. 30 seconds of speech, and then he can get mad at you. Why does he get mad at you? Because you're right. Does that solve the problem? No. In the next game, there needs to be someone else like you. And in the next game, there needs to be someone else like you. And I guarantee you that if that person plays 10 games in a row where there's a single person that's like, hey man, 
Why don't you lay off? They're gonna shut the f up on game 11. They're not even gonna do it. You're not gonna convince them of anything. In the end, there's only so much you can do to stop someone from flaming you repeatedly or being unwilling to cooperate with you or your teammates. Mute the player and continue focusing on your gameplay. Patience is just the starting point of becoming a more mindful competitor. We have much more to cover in the coming episodes, but my hope is to start a discussion. If you or someone you know wants to be a part of this discussion, feel free to join the Mindful Games Community Discord. The link for that can be found in the description below. I want to make this series the best it can be, which means I can't do this alone. If you know of anyone out there who wants to collaborate or have suggestions for future episodes, feel free to leave a comment below. I truly believe that if we practice positive mindset, we can make the competitive environment more fun for everyone. I'll see you in queue.